In this section, we will deep dive into the Modbus protocol using Wireshark. For this purpose, you need to open the Modbus slave, set it up, and configure it to hold registers, the default, then bring it online. Make sure you're using Modbus TCP and the IP address is the IP address of your machine. Press connect and the Modbus slave is now aligned. Now go to the Modbus poll client. Do the same as well under the setup and bring it online. Okay, now we have the client and the master online. We just need to make some changes to the registers. Before that, you need to spin off the Wireshark and monitor the local loop. Now that Wireshark is up and running, let us change the register value of address 4 to 999 and send it to the slave. Now let's see what happened in Wireshark. All right, this is the traffic that was captured. We have read and write functions. So let's start with the write function here. You can see that the response and the query, I have filtered on the conversation between the local loop IP addresses. So you can do that by right clicking and conversation filter and you can use TCP. Now that we have filtered on the conversation, let us see the response or the query versus the response. Now, as we've seen earlier, the header contains the transaction identifier, which is this one, it's a two byte in length. We have the protocol identifier as well, two bytes in length. We have the field length, two bytes. We have the unit identifier as well, one byte. So the transaction identifier is to synchronize the communication between the devices. The protocol identifier is always zero for Modbus. The length field identifies the remaining length of the packet and the unit identifier is the address of the slave it is one in this case all right so we also have the function code in this case it's six which is write single register and the reference number is the address so remember that we've written to the address four and this is the data so this is a hex data zero three e seven which converts to 999 in decimal. Now let's see the response. Within the same structure of the packet, we have the identifier is 136. It's the same transaction ID, right? The protocol identifier, as we said, is zero. If we go down, the function is six and the uh, data that was written is 03E7, which is 999. And you can see it reflected on the slave. Now let's take another example for reading holding registers. This is the transaction ID 135. Let's start with the query. So you're querying the registers from 0 till 10. And this is the response here. All right. So uh, the response returned the values of the registers address 0 till 9 and you can see here the 999 value that we have populated 